Hemant Kanawala is head of equity Kotak Life Insurance. He's uh, joining us right now on the show. Uh, Mr. Kanawala, thank you very much for your time. Good morning, Prashant. This side, what's your own sense? Uh, have you bottomed out? Hi. Good morning to all the viewers. Uh, bottom out or not is always a you know very difficult uh, question to answer because that depends on uh, you know variety of factors. So let's look at some of them uh, which determine the, you know, in a way, uh, future of the market uh, index. So in the, the first uh, important factor uh, in the direction of the market is going to be the earnings of the corporates. Uh, we just come finished the earnings in for the December quarter. And, uh, you know, earnings have so far, you know, disappointed even below the uh, reduced expectation. So we are not getting any comfort uh, on the earnings perspective that uh, things are bottoming out. Corporates have uh, guided cautiously. And uh, I think two important factors which can determine the future course of it is uh, if the uh, you know, government is able to give some stimulus in the budget uh, to revive the investment cycle. And second will be bond soon. So these two uh, you know, factors will determine the future course of earnings. As of now, uh, we believe that uh, earnings can grow uh, in double digits in FI17, but we will need to, uh, you know, attract the progress of it. Uh, particularly uh, since the banks may have to, you know, continue to provide for the NPS even in this quarter, uh, overall market earnings will continue to remain subdued even for the uh, March quarter. So earlier uh, pickup uh, is expected only from the June quarter, so we need to track of it. So earnings side. Uh, although things are expected to be better uh, in FI17, but we cannot see clear signs of it being bottomed out as of now, and as, as there were downgrades uh, as the earnings uh, progresses. Uh, second uh, factor in the market is the PE multiple, and which is determined uh, practically by the you know flows and the interest rates. So on the flows angle, uh, although domestics have been pretty good uh, throughout uh, 2015, uh, FIs have been uh, you know on the selling side. Even in the last three days of rally, they have continued to be seller. So that is an important variable to you know track. Uh, there are various uh, reasons subscribe to why FIs continue to be seller. But the fact of matter is that they are selling in emerging markets, and India is uh, you know one of the uh, impacted markets. So we need to track that uh, for uh, you know whether there can be re-rating of the market going forward. So these are two important variables. So uh, you know there are maybe some uh, early signs that market might be finding some stability. But there is bottom down or just too early to say. We need to track both these factors to make a you know better judgment of it. Yeah. What else? Uh, uh, so, the budget you think should provide a stimulus? You said budget and monsoon. Budget should provide a stimulus, and what kind? So one thing, uh, you know, there is a, you know, normal expectations. The one is that, you know, fiscal deficit, uh, you will not uh, want it to slip uh, beyond, uh, obviously, the current year's level, which is expected to be in the range of 3.9%. But, you know, finance minister had committed that there will be fiscal consolidation and it should move towards 3.5%. So one is that uh, government needs to stick to the fiscal uh, consolidation path. But at the same time, uh, you know, the increase in revenue expenditure should be, uh, you know, below 5%, as well as uh, in, uh, there should be increase in the capital outlay to, uh, you know, 25% of the, uh, the uh, overall expenditure. So we are, what we are saying there obviously is a tough task for the finance minister to manage that, you know, uh, stick to fiscal consolidation path, but at the same time increase the capital outlay and curtail in the revenue expenditure. That is a broad expectation apart from, you know, rationalization of taxation duties and all will happen. But main stimulus we want is uh, increase on the capital outlay, particularly towards the rural side. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't want a big expansion in uh, the FISC or something, right? You just want reallocation towards rural, rural development. Uh, that will not be welcome unless there is a... Yeah, so if the fiscal stress is happening because of the increase in capital outlay, then, uh, you know, my investors might be uh, okay to take it uh, because it will, uh, you know, at times of investment, you may have to sleep on it. So, you know, on what count we sleep is always going to be material. But by and large, government should stick to fiscal consolidation because last year itself, you know, they had taken a uh, levy of one more year. 
saying that since the times are tough, we may uh, achieve 3% by in four years instead of three years. Now, you know, if you again slip on it, then uh, investors will want uh, you know very valid reasons for it. Otherwise, it may not be taken uh, in a kind way. Mm. Uh, okay, fair enough. <clears throat> you you began by saying that tough to save earning the worst in terms of earnings is behind us, right? And you then you said that 17 you were expecting double digit earnings growth. What I mean, barely yes. double digit or 15% uh, or more than 15%. So, uh, it is expected to be in the range of 15%. See, overall, if you see uh, from FI14 to FI16, uh, index as an aggregate, you know, there is no earnings growth. So, that sets up a favorable base. So, if uh, monsoons are normal, because one of the dampening factors in the last two years has been the monsoon. So, economy is suffering on account of two uh, reasons. One is monsoon was an issue domestically and uh, global economy is on a slow path. So, assuming there is a you know improvement in both factors, then we can expect uh, earnings growth. Uh, just to put things in perspective, even when we started FY16, there was an expectation of uh, you know double digit earnings growth, but which eventually did not materialize. Partly uh, because of the factors which I just mentioned, global economy was slower than uh, initially anticipated, as well as monsoon was an issue. Uh, apart from that, uh, you know uh, banks also had to provide for uh, you know NPAs. And that all, again dampened the earnings for the banking sector also, which is close to 30% of the index. So these are the factors we need to watch. Uh, so that's why I said, uh, as of now, the analysis suggests that uh, earnings can grow, but we need to see the track of it. Uh, there are no signs of bottoming on the earnings cycle as of today, because normally when the earnings bottom out, you will see upgrades happening as earnings progress and not downgrades. But uh, here, you had downgrades happening as the earnings is in progress. So you cannot say there are signs of bottoming out. So this is more of an expectation and hopeful that uh, you know as the year progresses, things will improve and uh, earnings growth will come back. Mm. Uh, you know, I know what you're uh, bullish on and we've discussed those in the past as well. I just want to get a sense. Uh, mm. I, I, is it very clear where the earnings downgrades are going to come from? So, uh, it's basically, you know, the same stressed sectors where so, earnings are not picking up or we could have new challenges. So, as of now, when we are, you know, believing that uh, earnings growth will pick up next year, one of the assumptions is that uh, this year we'll see worst of the asset quality problems happening by the bank. Although RBI said that they want to clean out books by FI79, that is March 17. But, you know, this quarter may see one of the March quarter where, uh, you know, uh, PSU banks uh, as well as private sector banks will take much of the write-offs. And as the, in FI17, you will not see much effect of it. But if the global economy continues to remain under stress and, uh, you know, further NPA problems crop up, then, uh, you know, there can be uh, downgrades on that sector. So as of now, the assumption is that banking sector will show earnings growth next year. Uh, even on the commodities side, which has seen big downgrades uh, last year, uh, again, we believe that your situation may not deteriorate from here onwards. Uh, maybe we have seen uh, lows being placed in the uh, oil as well as steel side. Government has, you know, tried to uh, put minimum import price on steel, so that should stabilize earnings for the sector. So government is taking certain steps which should help the, you know, commodity sector and may, uh, may not see much earnings downgrade there. So these are the two main sectors where the earnings downgrade happen. And third will be any sector which is linked to the global economy. So the companies like Tata Motors saw downgrades during the last year because a uh, large part of the earnings comes from JLR, uh, which operates in many uh, uh, global markets. Officially, they operate mainly in the global markets. And because of the slowdown, they had seen earnings downgrade. So this is what we need to watch. So global economy will continue to uh, remain an important variable, and we need to watch it. As of now, it is an expectation that things will stabilize uh, globally and economy should be on the way up. But if we continue to see signs of deterioration there, particularly from China and Europe, then uh, you know risk to the earnings growth will is always there. So three sectors are, are, are could you uh, repeat the sectors again? Metals, energy? Uh, where downgrades can happen is, uh, yeah, metals, commodities broadly. So when we say energy uh, is not the utilities part, but 
so oil commodities and banks these are the three sectors where we have seen bulk of the earnings downgrade and which had a reasonable weight uh, in the index so uh, in from a market perspective they are you know relevant ones others uh, you know may not uh, matter much my uh, commodities have a small weight but the earnings downgrade was to such an extent that even with a small weight uh, that mattered for the market yeah no so these are well recognized right uh, mr kanwala but i'm talking about whether they could be new sectors where downgrades can start to happen you know consumer for example in a larger we've already seen by the way earnings uh, momentum earnings expectations being trimmed down a little bit nothing in the in the scale of commodities or banks but we've seen seen some of that but can it happen Dis uh, especially on the discretionary side can uh, can we see more staples uh, you know what about tech pharma see by uh, you know nature uh, you know big downgrades in earnings happens where the sectors are financially leveraged because that produces disproportionate uh, effect on the pet so the sectors which we just discussed uh, both commodities as well as banks they are you know heavily leveraged uh, commodities well recognized but banks uh, although it is a leverage people don't really see the risk in it you know normally the banks take uh seven to eight times uh, their equity as loan so when any asset goes bad which has happened in uh, last year the impact on the balance sheet and pnl is disproportionate and they, we are seeing the impact of it and that's where the earnings downgrade happen uh, other sectors uh, you know even if say consumer staples you mentioned there can be downgrades which has uh, happened last year but since the sector have very low operating and financial leverage uh downgrades are also not material so if there is some uh, slow down in uh, sales which is uh, happening in last year uh, the impact on uh, profit uh, is not disproportionate so in the financially leveraged sector the impact on both side is very high and uh, again there is a expectation that we have seen worst of it but if con things continue to deteriorate uh, then we may see more impact of it so that is what we need to watch out for so these are the two sectors where the you know impact was uh, majorly there third is where infrastructure sector is uh, you know heavily leveraged but there the government has been initi have initiated steps in the last few years which we believe uh, will start yielding results so stress there will be uh, you know in a limited way and that should not uh, really matter even from the index perspective their uh, weight is now low so earnings downgrade uh, does not matter so banks continue to remain an important variable as far as the uh, earnings of the index is concerned right Uh, you've liked cement. Uh, we've we've discussed the sector in the past. Uh, any any uh, thoughts there? Any changes? No. So we continue to like. In fact, uh, if you see uh, till December, the uh, demand growth was very slow, particularly in the north, and uh, that's why prices also had corrected. Uh, what we have is that uh, in January as well as in February, the demand continues to remain strong. and as a result uh, we have seen some stability in the price also uh, more importantly uh, most of the companies in this sector uh, do not have, uh, have uh, financial leverage their balance sheets are in a very healthy position and so it fits with our theme that you know invest in companies today when economy is down which have a very uh, good strong operating leverage and uh, low financial leverage because uh, the you know as we saw last year we were hopeful at the start of fi 16 that uh, we will see economic recovery uh, as the year progresses but because of global conditions uh, that did not materialize so in such a situation if you have a leverage play and balance sheet stresses there then companies may uh, find in a difficult spot uh, which we are witnessing in say today steel sector where the balance sheets are leveraged so overall as a theme we like companies which have a high operating leverage companies have a low utilization today because of uh, slow down in the economy but uh, are not financially stressed uh, and have a healthy balance sheet and cement fits with that and uh, we believe that if the economy re uh, recovers then cement is uh, one of the better ways to play the economic recovery uh, on both uh, investment side as well as the uh, consumption side because uh, housing constitutes large part of the cement demand and uh, part of the slow down which we are seeing in last two years in cement is because uh, real estate is not doing well as the you know construction activity again picks up you know that may not materially mean that housing prices move but just the construction activity goes up uh, that will mean good for the cement uh, volumes as well as prices and hence we are continue to remain uh, positive on that sector 
Thanks very much. Great speaking with you. Uh, and it's always a pleasure to have you here on the channel.